Hello Flosstube, it's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I want to welcome all of you to my channel. I'm glad that you're here. I hope everyone's had a wonderful week, crossed all the stitches and got lots of things crafted and get started on your gardens. I know that I have enjoyed this past week. I've had a little junking ex excursion last weekend. I picked up a little haul come in my mailbox. Um, I've made a couple of bags, got some work done on my focus piece. Just had a really good week, productive week. Um, work's been really hectic this weekend, so I think I've been focusing my stress and energy into my stitching, but that's not a bad thing. That's why we stitch, right? Um, so I wanna go ahead and share with you some of the things that I just mentioned, starting with my focus piece, which is a sampler story by uh, Brenda Keys. And I've got an older pattern, so it has the, the little pictures come off of it. Um, but there's 24 squares and they're all just small motifs, or they appear to be small motifs in this little picture. Uh, they're larger than you would anticipate them being, but there's a total of 24. And I'm stitching them on a piece of 25 count linen, one over one. I don't think I've shared um, with you the threads for this piece yet. I just made my own um, floss rings, floss tags. But these are the threads. And um, as you can see, there's a lot of threads for this, this piece. And like I said, I'm stitching it on a one over one on 25 count linen. It says Weigert linen. And I finished these two pieces this week. So my goal is to do two each week. And I know that uh, depending on the amount of stitching in each one that may or may not, uh, that goal may or may not be attained, but it is a goal. And I finished Rejoice Rejoice, which is just a small little white church. And who doesn't love a little small white church? And the one at the bottom, I don't know who Rex is. I come really close not to put in the name in there. <laughs> But um, for a minute, I thought he had flared pants on, but I think that's just the bottom of his coattails on his jacket coming down. But I finished him up last night. And then I'll move over to the right of those two. And um, hopefully one of them is Adam and Eve, the one by the church, which is a good placement for Adam and Eve in it. I'm gonna pick up on Adam and Eve in the tree and below that is a big house, so I'm not really sure that I will get um, complete my goal for this week just because the piece is, let's show you. If you look, the house seems to be the largest piece or motif in this pattern. This, I think, is a full coverage square as well, so that one probably take me a while to get that one done, but... I'm not sure I'll get reach my goal this week, but like I said, it's just a goal, and I should get Adam and Eve done this week. So it's my goal. I'm still plugging along. It's my focus piece. I'm knocking those whips out still, and um, it feels good. It feels really good. I got a lot of comments last week about others finishing theirs. I've always struggled finishing my pieces because I didn't have the confidence to do so, and I talked about this in a couple of videos how... Um, Having so many stitchers jump out there and make videos on how to finish things or how they do, I always grab little little nuggets of wisdom and tips and tricks from each of them and put it in my cross stitchers tool belt. So when I sit down to make my own, I may still struggle a little bit, but I get more and more confident with each tutorial and with each new piece that I finish. And so I'm thankful for those that take the time to make the tutorials. Um, but it feels really good. It's it's. It's akin to fill it, finishing a pack, I mean, um, a pattern. When you finish a cross stitch piece, you get this burst of energy, you're excited, um, you've got it, finally got something beautiful completed, and you get to start another one, and it's just a, it's just a boost of, um, of joy, is what it is for me, is it's just joy. So, um, finishing pieces in the past, this past year, and like I said, um, two in, in past videos I've shared that I'm trying to finish two, completely finish two items that I've finished in the past year. I mean, past years. And I have been sticking to that as well. So I've got a piece that I'm gonna use that to caveat into the next thing. I shared with you a Lottie Da freebie piece that was um, gifted to me as a little um, 
kitted at, from a friend, Natasha Stitcherella here on Instagram, um, false tube, I'm saying Instagram. And I finished it into a bag uh, this week and I wanted to share it with you. So I used Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch's uh, tutorial video on bag making and I'll list it below. But um, I got the idea to put this into a bag from um, Faye Rigsby who does finishing um, she's Carolina Stitcher, but I think she's under Faye Rigsby on Instagram. And, and it's been a couple of years ago, I seen that she finished someone's piece into a bag and it gave me an idea to do that. Now the piece in it together and another piece, all of that was new to me, um, but I think I did pretty well. I, I do like it. I am gonna add one thing to the bag though, and it'll probably be this evening, but I can I iron the mess out of this. <laughs> I just ironed it and ironed it, and because of that, you can see where the the cross stitch fabric is. You know, there's an indentation in this fabric here where I where I ironed a mess out of it. And I want to take some wool thread and just add some large, just um, full cardish, um, oversized cross stitches down the side of each part of this stitch piece. Um, probably use like an ecru type thread. I've got some upstairs, and other than that, it's finished. Um, I just pulled some fabrics that I had from other projects out of my stash, and this is my lining fabric. It's pumpkins as well. I don't know what I'm gonna stuff in this yet, but whatever it is, it's gonna be beautiful. But um, fall is my favorite time of year. So there's that one. And um, this week, I have been, over the past month, uh, binge-watching Anne of Green Gables on Netflix, and that was one of my favorite book series as a teenager. I read those books. I had the paperback copies, and I read the whole series, and I loved them, and then I was watching um, the designer for JBW Designs, which has a floss tube, and she makes such dainty... Um, very feminine designs and they're beautiful and she shares them with you on her floss tube so watching her and see how seeing how she goes about designing all all that goes with with watching a floss tube video led me to searching out more of her designs now i have stitched a few which i'm going to share a couple with you but i bought this one and i ran when i ran across it it just all happened at the same time i'm binge watching the video the videos of Anne of Green Gables. It was one of my favorite book series as a young girl. And then I found an Anne of Green Gables um, sampler by JBW Designs. And I bought the fabric. So I got a piece of 32 count platinum Belfast, which is one of my favorite go-to fabrics to stitch on. And I, I'm, I'm trying to finish my whips, but I'm really wanting to start this piece. And even finishing this up reminded me of how, um, and I may misquote Anne, but she would say she loves living in a world where there's Octobers. That's me. <laughs> That's me. There's no more beautiful month. It's my birth month. It's, the, uh, it's a, a time of year here in South Carolina where it's cooling down and the leaves are starting to change a little bit and there's a different smell and feel to the air. And anyway... So I'm itching to start this one, and it was not, it's always nice to visit with the designers of the piece, and she gives a little information inside of where she visited Prince Edward Island in Nova Scotia. And she visited the house, even though Anne is a fictional character, there is a Green Gables house, and she visited it, and there is needlework inside. And if you've not watched that Netflix series, um, at the bottom of the stairwell, as, you know, Anne's coming down to school every day, there is a sampler on the wall in Marilla and Matthew's house. So, um, just right now, I'm just kind of into Anne of Green Gables. I know that I got online this weekend, and I'm thinking, I want to make a bag. <laughs> I'm sure there's Anne of Green Gables fabric. I know I'm not the only one who loves her. And I find that um, there's a quilting fabric designer, design company. I can't remember who it is now. I know I've heard of them, but I'm not a quilter. 
Um, there's a new Anne of Green Gables line coming out with plums and purples and lime greens and just beautiful colors. And I looked at them and I said, you know, I'd really like to get this line and make that bag and, and the, the, you know, there's birds and things on them, but if you know the books, the Snow Queen was right outside of Anne's window, which was just a tree with big, beautiful bloss white blossoms on it, and she would talk to the tree. <laughs> and there's no Snow Queen in there. So I think because it's, it's spring, I'm gonna be looking for fabric that reminds me of the Snow Queen, and I wanna make a bag, using Elizabeth Ann's tutorial again, make a bag to put this piece in. Um, and so, there you go. So, <laughs> that's a lot just to say, hey, I've got another bag. <laughs> I wanna share with you another bag. But I'm gonna come back to those JBW designs, but with the bags, I did finish up another one, and I had Anne in this one, but I don't wanna leave her here. I don't want her to have a home in this bag. But this is a Pioneer Woman fabric. It come from Walmart. There were several different ones. They came out last year and you could only get them in the stores and they were just on like a little cardboard end cap. And so you really had to look for them. The ones I found were not in the craft area. They were in like the seasonal area. And there were maybe eight, 10 different fat quarter rolls for it. And this is just one of the fabrics that I got. This is a fabric that I had that I finished up my last bag with, but this is the other, one of the other Pioneer Woman fabrics as my inner fabric, my lining. And I made this one yesterday as well, and this is bright and happy and fun, and it's, it's a perfect place for the Ann sampler right now. And it's not Ann, it's actually called Green Gables if you're interested in it. But I just know that she was, you know, Ann was passionate and, joyful and friendly and accepting and loving and um what a perfect bag for her temporary bag but back to jbw designs i decided to pull out a couple of the pieces that i have finished of hers in case you're not familiar with her to familiarize yourself with her so this is an, an old one i just happened to run across it's um called sweet nothings sweethearts and it has a little um, button or button heart-shaped bead that comes along with it and it's been in this in my stash so long that it come loose from the card but can you see that and that's a cute but there's this and I have a couple more but I just they're just scattered amongst my stitch room but as far as finished pieces I don't remember the name of this one I've had this one for a long time I framed it myself a long time ago and as a young mad woman, when my eyes were still good, I stitched this one over one on 36. <laughs> you see how dusty that is? Can you see that dust? I'm sorry. It's been on a bookshelf in my bedroom and I just, I have forgotten all about it still until visiting that floss tube channel and looking up the patterns and all the things I just shared with you. And I wanna say this is like me amore I don't remember, but I would frame it differently now. I actually had this professionally framed and you can see, I can see the wrinkles in there. It wasn't done very well, but I need to take it apart myself. And then this one, you may remember it if you've watched my channel for a while. I finished this one up at the beginning of last year, I believe. I finished the piece in 2007, but actually finished, um, did the finishing on the piece last year, and I got this as a um, freebie design at a retreat um, hosted by Katrina Boyd, um, and she's also has a floss to um, channel two, and she gifted the attendees to her retreat this pattern and the threads, and I found I had the fabric and stash, had the wool and the buttons and stash, and the wool threads and stash, and I just kind of did a funky. However, I felt stitch along the edges just to give it a little more texture, a little something to draw your eye away from the brightness of the fabric. And then I just love the color on this wool. And then I did 
this finish were two pieces, um, two panels and just um, lighter stitched them together. So those wooden buttons. And I'm really happy with this one too. This one stays in a basket up in my stitch room that's starting to overflow with um, gifted pieces and my finished pieces as I go along. So there's that. And so Anne was one of my pieces and the fabric was one of the pieces I received in the mail this week at home as, as haul. And this is another piece that I had put on a notify me list on one, two, three stitch and it come back in, in, in um, stock and they emailed me and so this is Heart of Hearts by Abby Rose Design. As you can see here we are in March and I had was looking at it in February so to stitch it as a Valentine piece. So maybe when I make Anne's bag, this one will replace Anne in the Pioneer Woman fabric bag. We'll see. So this coming week, um, I'm gonna continue to, as, long as, as well as working on my focus piece, I'm gonna continue to work on In My Father's House by, by the Bay Needle Arts. And this is the piece. And I shared this last week, and I'm only stitching on this um, when I'm home in the mornings, like this morning. I'm, once I finish the video, I'll work on it a little bit. If I get to come home for lunch, I'm stitching on it. But like I said, this week's been a wet work, a hectic work week. So I didn't get a lot finished, but I did finish this tree and started on this tree. So I'm hoping this week to finish this tree and there's one more tree before I can start the house. And once I finish up a sampler story, then this will become the focus piece until I finish it, and then I'll have another piece in the background going as well. It might be Anne. So I would show you the threads for those, but I do not um, have them bobbinated or on cards yet. I'm just kind of winding, I am bobbinating those. I had kitted it up years ago, and I'm bobbinating as I go. So as I need a color, I bobbinate it then. I'm not bobbinating all at one time. I'd rather be stitching than bobbinating. You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, I will say with this one, it is stitched on 36 count per pearled barley linen. And I'm using um, one strand over two on this 36. And normally I'll take it off and iron it before I show you guys, but since I'm gonna start stitching on it as soon as I'm done with the video, I didn't wanna take it off. And this week, I've had a couple of designers comment on my videos, and I love it when anyone comments on my video, but when the designer of this piece, her name is Donna Bayless, takes the time to drop by my floss tube and thank, but basically thank me for sh sharing her, one of her pieces and just to comment it all. Um, I know all of you designers are just people like the rest of us. You're, you're someone like me, you just enjoy stitching. It brings you joy and happiness and just like me. But you're rock stars in my world. All the designers are just rock stars and it's, Thank you, thank you for just taking the time to say, just to say hey. <laughs> it made my week, and that, and um, Not Forgotten Farm, um, Lori, not only does she have a wonderful first name, she has a floss tube as well, and I'm gonna link her below, because if you're not following Lori, you should. Um, she has a great eye for folk art type designs, and like me, she kind of flies by the seat of her pants and she does what she loves. And, and there's a, a lot of where her designs come from and I love the names for her pieces. And she has an Etsy shop. Um, I'm gonna link that below and I'm gonna link her floss tube channel below. And if you've not found her yet or not watching her yet, pop over and visit with her, tell her hello, show her some appreciation as well because um, without them, what are we gonna stitch? Let them know we love them. <laughs> okay, this coming week, um, 
along with focusing on a piece and working on my whips this year, um, the other goal is, like I've said, is to finish two previous finishes, so each month. So the Lottie Da freebie, which I'll link that was on this bag, let me just show it again. This one, I've got it linked in my last video, but I'll link it again in this video, because if you didn't, if you're not interested in that piece, Lottie Da has a beautiful set of freebies on her pad, on her website. So I'm going to list it for you. Even if you're not interested in that, if you love freebies, just go take a look. Um, but I finished this piece into this bag and I pulled out one more freebie, not freebie, one more finish. And this is, I guess, I'm assuming it's called Garden Treats. I'm so wonderful at centering my patterns. I want to say I stitched this in the 90s. It's been a long time. I do know that. This fabric is, is not as hard as burlap. I know there's a name for it. It's been a long time since I've stitched this piece. Um, but these are little clay buttons. It's Garden Treats, a little bunny with, I love the little peas in a pot. Isn't that so cute? Little radish. And I think I'm going to, Finish this into what I think is called a flanged pillow. I've got some fabric. I need to make sure the fabric's gonna work well. I think, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work well with this piece and get that finished up within the next two weeks. And then I'll have both of my two pieces finished. One of my goals will be complete for this month and that's to finish this. And so I got online this morning knowing I was gonna mention this in the video and took a look to see if they were still designing. I can't answer that question. I did see several of their other pieces pop up because this is how they come. I, I was looking for the JBW design in a stack I knew were older things and I come across this so I have another one. Oop. No, that was right. They're called Hobnob. So what you get is the pattern and the pattern is just the border and you get the cute little clay button, which this one I think is gonna be stitched this year. I'm gonna leave that out so that I can see it. He's so cute. And so you just get the border and you get the button. So you provide the fabric and you stitch the piece. Like I said, these I think were in the 90s. I did find some online. I did not find Uncle Sam. No, I found, uh, saw snowmen. Um, I wanna say there was a bunny. Not this one, but a different one. More like a human bunny. Um, so if you're interested, there's still some out there on eBay. But just a cute little design from years ago. I'm gonna finish that up and I'll have it disp on display for next month for Easter. That's the reason I picked this one out to finish. It's a perfect time to finish it, isn't it? So last week, um, my husband and I do every Saturday what I call is rambling. We pick up what groceries we need for the week. Um, if we need anything else, like we're pricing mulch and topsoil right now, we need to get a couple of loads of those to update the front yard. And my son-in-law built a, um, a garden bed for me outside, and I'm excited about it. But it's going to need a lot of dirt, so um, we're going to have a couple of loads delivered so that we can fill that probably make a couple more beds and do the mulch. So we're anyway, sidetracked. <laughs> we're out rambling and I needed a couple of things from Hobby Lobby and I can't even remember what they were. And so most times he'll go in with me, this time he drops me off at the door. I run in, I get what I need, I come out and they're like five, 10 minutes. And he parts off to the left, to the side of the building. He always parts there if he drops me off. And I head that way, I see the truck, I head that way. I'm like two feet from the truck. Somebody behind me is beeping. I'm thinking, I'm, I, I've walked out in front of somebody. It's my husband. He says, what are you doing? <laughs> I was about to get in some other man, wife's husband's truck. There was another husband out there waiting on his wife. My husband did not park in his normal spot. 
He circled the parking lot this time because he know, knew I was only going to be in there for that few minutes. And um, the other guy had a dark blue truck, <laughs> not a black one like we have. And I was this close to getting in some man's truck. So we have laughed about that all week. I don't even remember what I got in that bag from Hobby Lobby. But I was so excited and thinking so forward to what I would, whatever I was going to craft that... I was gonna get in some other man's truck, go home with him, craft at his house, I guess. Thought you might get a kick out of that. So that last Saturday too, after leaving Hobby Lobby and my husband teasing me all day long, um, we went to one of my favorite junkin' spots here in the town that I live. And um, there's a couple of booths, I wanna say about three, that have on the regular sewing, stitching, crochet, needleworking items. And I always make a beeline for those. And this time, one of my favorite ones had trays of zippers and buttons and rickrack and seam tape and just all kind of stitching things. And I come out of there with, and I had to look because they were different size. Come out of there with several different zippers and lace trim and rick rack and i couldn't pass this rick rack up and it's like it's like baby rick rack which i love how tiny this is i can see this around the finishing of a christmas ornament you know where you attach two pieces you know the the front and backing piece together and this will go around the seam to hide the seam between the two sandwiched pieces and then some green Rick Rack for possibly Christmas. That is a little bright. I thought, well, maybe if I use it, I'll have to um, tea dye it, age it a bit. It's a little too in your face. So, and then I got this one. And there were more things. Thimbles and a couple of pin cushions. And I had bought from that booth before, as I shared several videos ago, I found an old... Um, pin cushion that was the iron I got that from that booth but a lot of times I'm walking through there my husband laughs at me because I'll get in there and just because something's in an antique store and it's older doesn't mean the price on it is reasonable and when I find something I really like I get online and I eBay it and see if it's there and see what a comparable price is and I don't buy it for that. But these were like 75 cent, dollar, quarter, you know, I couldn't pass this up. Plus, more bags because I've got new, um, some new zippers. Now, one of the ones I used on the Pioneer Woman is one of those zippers. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just been hiding away in someone's sewing stash for years and someone either passed on or is downsizing and, and those things are there. So um, a lot of people ask me what I look for when I mentioned that in my Instagram post last weekend, what I look for. And these are the type of things that I do look for. Um, I don't knit, but I will buy knitting needles. And I have an old um, flower jar that I just stick them down in. And I have an idea one day to do paper crafted flowers to go on top of those knitting needles. And I'm talking about the long ones, the metal ones, the wooden ones, it doesn't matter. Um, things like that. So I look for pin cushions and um, fabrics, linens, um, especially crocheted doilies. Um, I saw there's another designer that has a floss tube and it's blue ribbon designs. And she had a, vid a video this past week where she showed how to finish um, a piece that she just, just designed and it's of a blue bird or you can use a, make a robin on it. And the old bar jo ball jar lids, the old metal ones. And there's some at the antique shop. So I plan on going back and getting a few of those. Um, but she made a pincushion finish out of them. So 
I see another trip to my favorite junkin spot in the next couple of days, but I'll link her video below as well. Her name is Belinda. So if you've not watched Blue Ribbon Designs, she's coming out with more designs. She designed back in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. Um, she's had released some more new designs. She's more into quilting now, but I will list her below so you can go um, show her some love. And, um, but for those that ask, that's primarily what I'm looking for when I go into um, what I call a junk-in shop now is sewing notions. Um, yesterday when I'm sewing these bags, I found a couple of um, old sewing boxes. And I will buy them if there's nothing in them, but I've lucked up a few times and bought a few that have threads in them. And I use those threads when I sew these bags. Why buy new two, three dollar spools when I can buy $25, $30 sewing box full of, full of spools of thread. So um, it just brings me joy and, and I put everything into perspective of my grandmother who was a child in the depression and very much a use what you got, don't waste it. Um, waste not, want not. And I know that if I was using her things, it would bring her happiness to see them not go to waste. So that's how I look at it when I'm using someone else's things as well. I would, if it was me going forward and I passed on, I would hope that my things would go to someone that would love them and use them and not make waste of them. So I will leave you that for the coming week. I'll visit with you again next weekend. I hope to have a couple of squares, or at least one completed on a sampler story. Another tree finished on my father's house. Um, I doubt I'll have the finish on the hobnob piece, but there's a chance I will, depending on how I'm feeling. And until then, hugs and stitches. Bye-bye.